Welcome to Bits and Bytes Live, the series of episodes where we have short conversations around things happening in the world through the lens of the communication service provider. Had a short break here in the Northern Hemisphere, at least um, over the summer period, but uh, good to be back. And with TM Forum's digital transformation world just around the corner, uh, it seemed a good idea to think in terms of operational business support systems type conversations. So. Who better to have that conversation with than uh, Amdocs? So I'm Nigel Stevenson. I look after the market development uh, for EMEA here at VMware in the Telco Business Unit. And to have that discussion, I'm really delighted to welcome Dan Hodd, who is VP Global Cloud Alliances and Ecosystem at, uh, at Amdocs. Uh, as I say, who better to have the conversation with? And also Kahal Fitzpatrick, who is one of our senior uh, partner marketing managers here at VMware. So uh, welcome, gentlemen. Thanks for taking Thank the time here. Um, I'll kick this off. As I say, we've got DTW around the, the corner. Um, that does kind of focus around operational systems and so on. Um, so in that light, uh, maybe you can kick us off and, and give us a bit of a, your, your perspective of, of that part of the ecosystem, that part of running networks, and, and how partners like Amdocs help VMware fit into that space. Yeah. Um, well, what we see as operators are beginning to adopt cloud architectures for the different parts of their networks. The, the starting point on their journey to the cloud is typically their OSS, BSS workloads. Um, unlike network functions, back office, OSS, BSS applications um, can often run unmodified on standard cloud infrastructure and are therefore a lighter lift. Um, so Amdocs, as the global leader in OSS, BSS applications, are a particularly important partner for VMware as we can work together to show operators how they can innovate faster from the cloud and generate efficiencies by intelligent workload placement, leveraging both private and public cloud. And there's, there's a steep learning curve for operators as they start to move to the cloud and mm -hmm. the combination of VMware as a provider of the underlying platform and Amdocs as an overall solution and application provider removes the complexities that operators, operators face as they start their cloud journey. Um, a partner like Amdocs who can manage the life cycle of the entire application infrastructure stack is there for a huge value to both VMware and to our operator customers. Cool. And, and Dan, Frank, you, you, Amdocs got a long history in this space. Um, are you seeing... A long history also with VMware to start with. Indeed, uh, indeed, uh, yes. Um, so are you are you seeing the, a, a sort of a transition? Are, are the trend? What are the trends in terms of how customers, your customers, are looking to deploy these sort of OSS BSS type solutions? So uh, first of all, again, thanks uh, for inviting me. Um, we we saw we saw the um, uh, industry start moving to the cloud like back in uh, 2018 19, mm -hmm. um, and back then. We started before we started making our portfolio to be like a cloud native. We we rest, uh, rewrote you know, most of our, uh, our portfolio or put it um, in containers and make it uh, to be native uh, to run natively on cloud. So and, and because we saw and then we saw that the uh, telcos they want to move their um, uh, footprint or like the mission critical systems to the cloud and the reason and and again the, it was mainly like all systems i'm not talking about modernization right now okay now we see the modernization but you see one of the one of the main reasons was that the telcos they wanted to be like more cloud native uh, companies or cloud first companies and they found out that when you develop new applications on on the cloud in a cloud environment it could be up to 40 percent faster and then cheaper comparing to on-prem development. And I believe this is one of the, of the, the trends that start this uh, transition to the cloud. So, so the first thing that they wanted to do is to move the backend systems 
to put them also on the cloud. Because if you want to develop on the cloud and connect to, to the backend systems that are still running on-prem, you need like a specific, sometimes specific hardware, takes time until the, you know, the IT department gives you the permission. So, so we saw this trend starting in 2019, 1819. And then when customers, you know, revisit it and they started to say, okay, but let's, let's get rid of the, of the legacy and let's uh, modernize. And then we saw in 21, 22, and every year we see like few big modernizations of, uh, of our customers, the telco customers, as they go the full blown on the cloud. But then it's a very, like, it's, it's, it's a significant, uh, significant project it's not like uh, walking in the interesting it, it, i'm kind of I'm torn between two ways of looking at it on the one hand 2018 19 doesn't sound very long ago yeah. on the other hand technology moves very quickly so it actually probably yeah. is a long time in technology terms but i guess that i kind of highlights a couple of things for me which is first i would imagine in that sort of time frame you of, of all the sort of network providers you were probably quite early in making that investment in cloud native because that that is a big architectural change from a from an application vendor's perspective yeah yes correct also we had a, a, a our, our portfolio was very heavily based on oracle technology mm -hmm. uh, with logic and the database and also back then i think from 2010 and even and maybe a bit after every all the all the software industry moved to open source so when we rewrote the the portfolio and rebuilt it so everything was done also with open source technology uh, again vmware always is uh, always at the back end uh, on the underlying technology i think uh, i'm not i don't know 30 years working with the vmware technology but yeah, uh, but yeah so there were another change to be uh, cloud native but also um uh, with open based on open source technologies cool I think I think we're only about twenty five or twenty six years old, but it's certainly a long a long relationship. I'll, I'll, give, you um, a, I'll give you four more. Maybe it just feels longer. Yeah. Um, and and so just just a sort of follow up then I suppose is you mentioned uh, customers replacing legacy systems or looking to replace legacy systems, but but are there are there compelling events around that? Is it simply that legacy systems go out of support, or or is it because new new opportunities arise? It, what, what would you say is the compelling reason that 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 causes a customer to say right now we're going to make that change so uh, when, when a customer when they want to modernize they must come with the business case to show their management and their investors that uh, that it will justify the investment because it's a major investment mm -hmm. so it will you know we know that the um, uh, simple stuff like uh, having a, being able to be faster time uh, with time to market of new products or new solutions. Uh, 5G and new technologies brings uh, uh, new needs, so you need to uh, to do that. Also, the customer experience now everything is like digital. Uh, the the um, everything should be like fast. The customers can do uh, to start, you know, on the uh, application or like self service application. If there is a problem, they can call, you know, the agent, and the agent will continue from the same uh, the same place where they stop. They expect you to be available on all mediums, you know, internet, TV, uh, whatever. You. So, so, so the big modernizations is around that efficiency, you know, and, and all this agility, all the, all those those uh, buzzwords, but they are still uh, very correct. On the other end, the, the customers that they still don't uh, modernize, they need to. Uh, in some some of our customers run systems of Amdocs that are like 15, 10, 15 years old, and some of them are out of support. The all the back the the back uh, the backend technologies or the underlying technologies like databases, operating systems. So you need to do some kind of upgrade, you know, to to do that. And by the way, this upgrade. There is a compelling event also to move to the cloud from the, the reason that I said in the, in the mm -hmm. beginning. So say so we're doing the upgrade, so let's move it already to the cloud. Right. So yeah, you get that flexibility um, immediately. And so Kahal, is that? I mean, that, to me, that resonates a lot with uh, mm -hmm. and explains a lot about the VMware strategy, I guess. But how would you how would you position VMware's view relative to what application vendors like Hamdocs are, are looking to achieve? Yeah, it definitely echoes what we're seeing elsewhere. So um, what we see is operators have obviously spent many years building their own private clouds. 
and now they're trying to exploit the capabilities of of public cloud so they need they kind of need the best of both worlds they need the securities and guarantees that they have from their private cloud and now they need to combine that with the flexibility mm-hmm. and ease of deployment in the public cloud and um, so the public cloud can be an essential tool for getting new services to market quickly and that's a, obviously a big driver for our customers and um, at the same time they don't want to be locked into what a single public cloud provider offers mm-hmm. that would limit their future room for maneuver and leave them exposed to unfavorable commercial terms so the the solution is a multi-cloud environment that spans their private cloud environment and multiple and um, public mm-hmm. cloud providers and so it's our, a very our, good point. We, we see every customer, every of our customers in, in the telco choosing two or sometimes yeah. more clouds. So the main, like there are main four ICO scalers yeah. uh, that we work with, all the industry work with. But And you see, you know, some of them choosing one for IT, another yeah. one for network, uh-huh. and one, another one for AI and big data. Yeah. So there's, there's, there's huge benefits to that. And our strategy at VMware is to ensure that our customers can do that as simply as possible by providing a consistent horizontal platform across all cloud types. So um, operational staff at our customers have the same management uh, tools. So they don't need to acquire new skills to manage applications when they move to a new public cloud. Um, so our the, the VMware software defined data center is available in all the, mo- all the public cloud providers that you mentioned. So it's easy for operators to build a hybrid multi-cloud environment that mm-hmm encompasses their own private cloud and then their chosen public clouds that they need for quick expansions or disaster recoveries or other other use cases and um, you, you know you mentioned moving legacy applications to the cloud well you know it doesn't have to happen all in one go so you can accelerate the process by re-hosting applications on the public cloud and then re-architecting or refactoring those applications you know at, at your convenience then over time um, so it's that- that links into I think what you mentioned earlier about the development side of things as well, yeah, Dan. Exactly. I guess yeah. the, that that flexibility. So the, and, and and I suppose just just to clarify the point, we're not we're not we're not talking about moving as in a dynamic place where we're constantly moving applications between different clouds. We're, we're talking more about picking the right cloud for the right application. Yeah. So so it's not about necessarily continually moving workloads. It's about mm-hmm. having the flexibility to put yeah. a workload where yeah. you think it would best sit. Exactly. And then trying to tie the operations piece across the top of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the challenge, the challenge of working with multiple clouds is that you need the IT of the customer to mm-hmm. know and support few clouds. Also in Amdocs, we started with one and then the second one, yeah. and and uh, and when, with the fourth, it's it's challenging. You need more team to support more to know more environment. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not talking about security, but you know the developers also they they right. need to be familiar. That's one of the advantages that you you guys have in uh, in VMware solutions with the cloud. That uh, for the developer, yeah. it's just it's seamless. They don't really know. For the IT, it's seamless. So yeah. right, and, and you know that's where that's where we can definitely yeah. help because you know again we provide that that those same tools across all the various cloud providers. Um, so the same team that is managing internal VMware platforms today can be reused to manage public cloud based VMware mm-hmm. platforms because the management tools are the same. Um, so yeah. the, the single pane of glass management across the entire multi-cloud infrastructure that's that's really important cool. so um so i don't know if either of you could respond maybe dan um how would you in fact yeah dan if i ask you the question how do you have an approach or how would you recommend to uh, work with your customers when, when they come to you and sort of say look we've got to modernize this or we've got to you know move from a legacy system how do you recommend or how does that process start is there any is there anything you've learned over the last few years that says actually this is a this is a way to approach the, the challenge yeah so uh, there is no one solution fits all but first of all the, the customers are very opinionated uh, regarding the cloud f- platform that they want to run on so right. they are a uh, you know we can we can take them through the process we do some POCs and, you know, we, we bring the, the pros and cons on or the advantages, but it always uh, like a bigger story, a bigger uh, uh, reason why to choose this cloud or another. But the cloud, but what I want to say, the customer is very opinionated. Now, Amdocs, Amdocs portfolio, it's like over 100 products, only mm-hmm. a few of them are real like SaaS. Some of them running on, on AWS, some of them running on Azure. 
in the future, you know, maybe uh, other cloud. So, so when you consume Amdox, you consume it in a managed services way. So Amdox is a, also a managed services company, right. but but you you really have as a customer have the, the the decision and to to choose which cloud you want to you want to run on. And we see the we see them, you know, choosing. Um, do they? Sorry, interrupt. Do they? Is that that's interesting that the customers already already obviously made some decisions ahead of possibly talking to people like yourselves. Um, are those decisions? Do you feel those decisions are to what extent are they technology decisions uh, versus commercial? You know, perhaps they already had an agreement nation, in place. Type nation, but before they had the agreement, they had to take this decision. So it's uh, like a commercial. But also people that you have uh, in many places, there are people that with uh, uh, like specific skill set, and it's easier for them. So the IT, right. you know, the CIO office, is pushing to to one direction, and and the, what what I feel is that the technical guys, they are the one who who's taking the decision, and then the the procurement or the commercial guys are are making it happen, making it happen. Mm. Um, so it's, so yeah, so it is. Um, it comes back to that point: is choosing the right cloud platform, be it private, public, somewhere in between, um, and across multiple providers, and, and rather than moving things around, you know, just for the sake of it, we're looking to find the right place to run an application or a workload and then find it and make it as easy as possible to do that, given that your answers might be different for different workloads in terms of where you place them and how you run them. And then on top of that, I guess you've got that developer development production environment type overlay as well, which might influence the decision as to how you how you deploy. Yeah. Yes, and sometimes, you know, if you want to integrate, depends to which other uh, systems you want to integrate mm -hmm. or to consume other cloud services. So if uh, you want to consume other cloud services that are available on this cloud, not cloud, sometimes it's a matter of if you have a data center in a certain country or region that uh, affects, you know, the decision from a regulation perspective. So mm -hmm. there are many uh, factors to do that. And, and to decide, you know, in which way you want to go. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, we want to support operators to give them the ability to choose different cloud providers for different different use cases, but we want to help them avoid ending up with totally separate silos. And they right. Ask the, you know, they yeah, make it seamless for them, basically. And, you know, they, yeah. don't, they don't need to have separate teams looking after all these different clouds. The same team can use, you know, the same set of tools. and. and manage um, applications and their development environments. We've, we've seen that in the core. I mean, it definitely happens. Uh, most of my experience is more towards the core of the networks. But we've definitely seen that happen where, where uh, if you like, a hardware silo has been replaced by a software silo. Yeah. But, but it's still a silo. <laughs> so <laughs> exactly. Yeah. you've still got a team running it. You've still yeah. got yeah. specialists, et cetera. So, so it's trying to create that open playing field, which um, which is obviously something we've been looking at for a long time. Um, Fasak, well, thank. Look, I, I, that was great having that conversation, and um, it's a good good opportunity to speak to you down and get a bit of a, a perspective yeah, from your from your your view because we're we're kind of looking at it from a platform perspective, and we're we're looking to to try and make these things easier for customers. But you know, ultimately, what they're doing is they're running applications such as yours, and, and that's what we're. We're all hoping to, to enable and make it simpler. Um, as I said, you, I think I mentioned at the beginning the TM Forum's got their digital transformation world coming up uh, next week as we speak. Um, I know you you guys are both going to be there. Yeah, I think you're, you're both traveling. Yep. Unfortunately, Unfortunately yeah. I'm not, um, so I won't be there. But um, if people want to reach out, I guess uh, I think we put a link up that they can they can reach out if they want to meet up there or anywhere else for that matter. Um, and uh, Either but if, if not that, then obviously we're all on LinkedIn. That's probably the easiest way, just to ping a message yes. on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure uh, you'd be you both be delighted to have a conversation with customers. But yeah, let, um, I wish you a good time. It's definitely the time to accelerate uh, cloud adoption. It, yeah, I, I think there's a few things coming together, and I think that's what we're customers. seeing. And and uh, as I say, it was kind of fortuitous. We got DTW around the corner, and that. That, that has a particular flavor, um, but I think that flavor of networking, that, that more operational side of the business uh, it, is really starting to get engaged with this space. As I say, traditionally, I, I personally spend more time on the core and the network side, but this has always been there, obviously, running the show. So um, thank you very much for your time. Much appreciated. Yeah.
as I say, if you want to get in touch, please reach out on LinkedIn. Otherwise, thanks for uh, thanks for listening, everybody, and thank you guys once again for taking part. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Bye.